today we're going to do a full strip down and restoration of this record player, the voice box from the vintage Star Wars Imperial Troop Transporter. This is part two of what I think is going to be a three part full restoration. If you missed part one, you'll have missed RoboSun, my retro writing machine. If you want to see that, there's a link in the description below. I don't know if you can read that clearly, but this record player is manufactured by Ozen. Now that name may be familiar to you. It's because they also provided the voice box for the Kenner Knight 2000 voice car kit. In fact, I've done a full restoration of kit as well, so you can look at that video if you wish. Now, this one has a few extra capabilities over the kit version. One, we've got all these wires, and those wires just support the switching between slow and fast playback of the sound. No idea why you need that feature. Now, the thing that I'm really intrigued by are these six red push buttons. Each button is assigned a Star Wars sound, and I'm really intrigued to understand how mechanically that actually works. I've wrapped a piece of elastic around this battery and taped it in place, which means I can just insert the ends of the wires or the connectors under these pieces of elastic and they'll stay in place. I think that's gonna save me a load of frustration and time. Let's give it a test, although I think it is still dead because I can't hear that motor running. Yep, nothing at all. Right, there's only one thing to do. Let's dismantle this completely, service all the parts, and let's get those sounds working just like they used to all those years ago. Let's crack on. Where to start? We've got three screws on this side, but I think I'll leave those. It looks like that's all associated with those push buttons. On this side, well, that looks like the kit voice box, very familiar. We've got two screws. I think I'll start there because I really want to get to that motor and get that running. Ooh, that doesn't look good. That green wire looks like it's been pinched. Should be coming out of that hole there. Carefully lift it off. Yep, that's just like the kit car. You don't need this for now. You don't need the speaker. And there's a close up of a scrunched wire. Oh, wow. Okay, we might get away with that just for now. We are getting voltage to the motor terminal, so it looks like a good old stuck motor. So I'm just gonna pull the motor from the base. The belt is gonna detach from that spindle, but we'll look at all of that later. There we go. Let's see if that's made any difference. Ooh. One step closer, very nice. You've got this red wire going to the negative terminal, you've got the white wire going to the positive terminal, and then you have this resistor. When this switch is on, the resistor is bypassed. Therefore, you get the full power from the battery to the motor. And when this switch is off, the flow can't go through this route anymore, so it has to go through the resistor. Therefore, the motor runs slower, and then you get a slower playback on the sounds. Now, I'm just gonna connect the white wire directly to the battery and we should hear it running slower. And there we are, a lower hum. And that's how the speed selector switch works. This is surprisingly clean for its age and also very familiar looking. The mechanics are exactly the same as the record player found inside kit. And it is just a record player. There's the record, it spins when the motor is engaged. You've got a needle on the record arm here. And as that record spins, it drags across this arm and eventually engages with this metal strip here. And as it does so, it breaks the circuit and the motor stops. We've got six buttons, which when pressed, play a sound. You can see that that tab moves across to the right and it lifts up the speaker. The needle arm is freed and there's a spring and it pushes it over to the right, engages the motor, and then the record player spins, bringing the needle back in again. Off, switching on again, and then switching off. In fact, that lever sticks every now and then, so I'll try and fix that as well. But what's really intriguing me, I'll just turn this upside down, is that unlike the kit car, which only has one button and it plays a random sound, here we've got six buttons and each button is allocated a specific sound. We've got the engine, R2-D2, C-3PO, Stormtrooper, Stun Rifle, and the laser cannon. How on earth have they done that? And in fact, Quite a common problem with these is that when you do press one of these buttons, you actually do end up with a random sound, even though you shouldn't. 
So let's find out how this works right now. It's not obvious to me how the sound is allocated to each of these buttons. We've got the ring that's spring-loaded. In fact, there's an angled slot that the button interacts with. We do have the record here that spins freely. It's just like the Knight Rider record. There are leading tracks on the outside. Uh, let's see what's going on here. Ah, what is that? There's a little tab on the turntable. Can you see that? Stick with me while I explain how a sound is allocated to each button on this troop transport. Now there are six sounds in total and there are six lead-in tracks around the edge of this record. Now we know when a button is pressed, the motor engages and the record starts spinning. But that little tab on the edge of the turntable hits against the button that's pressed and so it stops the record. Now the needle is over here. So when you let go of the button and that needle drops on the record, it's going to drop on that lead-in corresponding to that button that's been pressed. If I press a different button, for example, then the record spins around to that point, and now we've got a different leading edge that the needle is going to drop on. It really is quite simple. <laughs> I've rooted the band around that piece of plastic there. This is very fiddly, so hopefully I can get this back in the case. No, not yet. Oh, come on. <laughs> There we go. I think that's it. I think a band is back around the motor spindle. Okay, buttons are working and it doesn't look like it's sticking anymore, which is fantastic. This time I'm not pinching the wire. Oops, just forgotten one little thing. And it's very important, this spring here. It's the next morning. I've got my cup of tea ready. In fact, I'll have a sip now. Mm. Oh, that's good. And we're ready to test. Now, the needle is on the left-hand side, so the circuit will be complete. That means as soon as I attach this battery, that motor should engage. Let's see if we get any sounds. Oh, crap. What the hell was that? If I want to listen to that one more time... Uh, sounds like I'm taking chunks out of the record. Motor's running fine. Record is spinning well. Let's see if we can engage the needle. No. What's going on? Of course. <laughs> uh, record is spinning in the wrong direction. It should be going clockwise and it's currently going anti-clockwise. I am connecting the wires as per my diagram. This is exactly how it was inside the troop transporter. I guess over many, many years wires get disconnected and reconnected in the wrong place. I'll update this diagram so I remember when I put it all back together again. Whilst this is a part and I'm manually triggering everything, I thought I'd add a pink aluminous strip to the needle arm to demonstrate how this works. This is probably the most visual way I can show it. So at the moment the needle arm is on the right hand side which is breaking the circuit and as soon as I lift up the speaker you can see that it's released the needle arm and the needle arm has sprung over to the left hand side and when I push the speaker back down again on that needle arm it's going to push against the record forcing it to go to the right and then once it hits that metallic strip and breaks the circuit the motor switches off. Let's test these buttons starting at the top. Now this seems to be working very well, I'm pleased with this. If you listen very carefully, when I press a button down, you can hear the motor start and you can hear the record spinning. 
And then you can hear a second click and that's where that little tab on the turntable hits the button that is pressed. Now to my ear, those sounds are running slightly too fast. And also we now have that skipping problem. There is a switch on the troop transport for adjusting the speed. Currently it's in fast, I can switch over to slow. But for me it's just way too slow. So I think it's best I have it on fast and then we can fine tune it. And at the same time, we can also fix that skipping. And the trick to fixing both of those problems lies in this single screw here. Oh, you're joking. What the frick happened there? Where's that come off? Oh shit, here. This screw controls how much pressure the needle applies against the record. So the tighter the screw, the more pressure. The more pressure, the slower the record will play. But we have to be a little bit careful because if it's too much pressure, that needle over the years will just wear out the grooves in the record and nobody wants that. What I normally do is start out with this screw the loosest as possible and then just give it a few turns and then try out the sound. Tighten up a little bit more. And as you can hear, it slows down. Let's try. That actually sounds pretty good. If you do have random tracks played against the button, the tighter that screw, the more chance that needle has of engaging with that lead track. If it's too loose, then the possibility is that that needle will just jump over the lead track for that particular button sound and then move on to the next lead track. And now I'm actually pretty happy with that. This is a really nice example of the record player. I think I've hit the jackpot actually with this one. Awesome. We're at the final stage now of reassembly. I've managed to source all of the parts I need, some from the UK, some from the US. It's just cheaper that way. And I can't wait to get this troop transport back together again. And in particular, try out these sound effects within the vehicle. Tune into part three, where the restored troop transporter will finally be revealed. All of the parts will have been cleaned, the remaining issues fixed, and a fresh set of stickers applied. I can't wait. VTR. You f***ing tease. Thank you for staying till the end. Reward yourself with another VTR classic. Or just leave a comment, like and subscribe. Until next time, stay safe and cheers.